My name is Simon and this is how to build a racing car. You may have watched already the start of the build for the bodywork plug which will eventually be used to create the body moulds and finally the bodywork for my car. We finished the woodwork last time that provided the overall shape for the body but you would have noticed it had large missing sections where detailed or difficult curves are included in the design. In this episode I'll show you how I designed these sections and cut them from high density foam. I started with the lower front undercut since it was one of the simpler parts on the car. First I drew a block larger than the piece I was going to create, then I took just simple cuts from the block to create the shape that I wanted. Creating the block required me to carefully mark out pieces in the panels that I had purchased. At first I tried ruling a straight line and tracing through it with a hot wire cutter. Uh, later I set the hot wire cutter up with a guide so that I could just push the panel through the cutter to achieve a perfectly square block. This helped a lot later on when it came to marking out the more complicated curves. Even a simple piece like this front section required four separate pieces to be cut for each block, eight in total when counting each side. I marked the distance from the edge for the curve at 100mm intervals. The curve was gradual enough that it was almost impossible to tell that it was a straight line between each point. The block was then glued together. The glue was applied in a thin layer evenly over the entire surface. This wasn't just to get a good bond. The hot wire cut through the glue with more difficulty than the rest of the foam, so if it weren't consistent then the cutter would jump around as I was cutting, resulting in a poor cut. Once the glue was applied, the pieces had to be clamped together. Again, this wasn't just to get a good bond, the glue expanded as it set, so without clamping the pieces would shift during the setting process. After 24 hours, the glue was fully cured and I was able to start cutting the shape from the block. In this case I'd forgotten to mark the second cut line so I quickly went about setting that out. The first cut in this piece was a subtle curve which ran from the cockpit to the nose of the car. This was a simple cut which went straight through the block. The second cut was not so straightforward. It was angled at roughly 45 degrees, producing the undercut shape. Instead of using a protractor, I was able to enlarge the drawing on my surface and angle the hot wire cutter that way. After finding that little trick, I made sure to include these views on my drawings to speed up the setup. With that cut done, I had just completed my first foam part. Next up was the rear lower cutout. This was slightly more complicated in the front. Uh, the block I created as a base wasn't just a simple rectangular block. I started with a more complicated block to reduce the amount of material wastage. The foam wasn't particularly expensive, but it wasn't free either. Like the front, I started with a simple curve which ran from the front of the side pod to the rear of the car. 
I was getting comfortable with the process now, starting by marking the curve from the edge of the block at 100mm intervals, then running the hot wire cutter along the line. Again, a second angled cut is used to create the undercut. This one was actually easier to mark than the first block, as I just had to mark a single straight line along the side of the curve and run the cutter through that. And finally I got to glue these first parts to the wooden plug. It was surprisingly satisfying seeing just how well everything matched up despite using completely different construction methods. The shape of the car was also becoming more clear now that the foam was going in. Next up was the nose. This followed a similar process starting by creating a block then performing the cuts to create the curve. The block was more complicated again being created from five different foam pieces glued together. Clamping this piece was a challenge due to its shape. I cut wedges from the foam with the correct angle to produce a flat surface on either side. A long piece of wood was then placed against both of the two flat surfaces. Two clamps were then put on and tightened evenly. At first this caused the glued sides to try and slide up the inclines, but this was stopped by placing some weight on top of the entire assembly. I was able to use my father's A2 printer to create one-to-one -one scale templates. I was able to simply run the hot wire over the top of these templates to create a very accurate shape. We decided to move the plug to my garage at this stage to create room in my father's workshop so that we could start building the chassis. This had the advantage that I could keep working on the plug during the evenings. The middle rear curve was one of the most difficult to create. I ended up deciding to create it by cutting 11 separate wooden templates which I would then use sequentially to create 10 separate foam pieces, and in turn these would be glued together to form the part. Due to the part being made up of so many different pieces, it was quite hard to make it dimensionally accurate. I included a cutout in the corners of the template into which a wooden piece would fit, then I would clamp them on a flat surface to try and ensure that the part wouldn't be skewed or rotated. Even gluing and clamping so many pieces was a challenge. I glued them one by one and set them up on a flat surface as accurately as I could, then had to run ratchet straps around the lot without moving or bumping any pieces. After 24 hours I removed the ratchet straps, then marked the line at which it met the wood. I removed the foam along this line to allow the completed part to sit correctly in the wooden cutout. Although these pieces weren't perfect, their accuracy wasn't as critical as the other pieces. Any issues or misalignments were pretty easy to fix by bogging or sanding later on in the construction. The next piece was the engine fan cover which took the angled cuts shown earlier to a whole new level, requiring 6 cuts in total. Unlike the previous part, its accuracy was critical as the body wouldn't fit over the engine fan cowling if it was too small. As with the previous pieces, it's construction started with creating the foam block from which it would be cut. I built the left and right hand sides at the same time this time. I was now comfortable enough with the process that I was able to make the blocks in one evening after work, then cut the parts the following evening. Next was the roll hoop cover which would enclose the chassis roll hoop. While the engine cover had to be fairly accurate, it didn't really matter if it was slightly too large. The roll hoop however couldn't be too large or too small since either way it would clash with the chassis. 
I gave it a few millimeters gap in the drawing to allow for mistakes during construction, but I still had to be as accurate as possible. Like with the nose, I used wooden templates to cut the foam pieces for this part to try and be as accurate as possible. I also cut the curved rear piece for the roll hoop cover. I did this in a lobster back style, tapering the lower part of each piece to give it the correct curve. Next up were the bumps in the front of the bodywork for the dampers. Initially I was going to mark and cut them as I had with the engine cover, but I decided to simply print templates on A2 paper, cut them out and use thumbtacks to hold them to the foam for cutting. This ended up being much faster and more accurate than if I had tried to mark them up myself. Again, I was able to cut and attach all four pieces in one night this way. The last piece of the puzzle was attaching the curved lobster back, engine cover and air intake cover which required some back and forth with hot wire cutter to try and get everything to fit properly. And that's it, the bodywork plug now has its overall shape. Next we need to apply bog and sand to produce a smooth surface for painting before taking the moulds to create the bodywork. If you've enjoyed this episode, feel free to subscribe to get notifications when more videos go up. Also feel free to follow me on Twitter or Facebook where I'm uploading pictures of the build in a chronological way. Thanks and I hope I'll see you next time.